Hello everybody. In this podcast, we are going to discuss about uh, Darwin and his theory of natural selection. We will just discuss about uh, how the theory of natural selection it germinated in Charles M- Darwin's mind, and how he developed the theory, the various stages when he was developing this theory. That we'll discuss. Basically, he was born on twelfth February, eighteen nine, in Shrewsbury of England. But in 1831, when he was just uh, 22 years old, he accepted an unpaid post of a naturalist. The post was given to him by the British Admiralty, which is the British Government Navy Department. They asked him to go for a world voyage for five years, from 1831 to 1836. For five years, they asked him to go for world exploration to discover about different plants. flora fauna and the geology of different countries on the globe so he started his journey from 1831 starting from south america and he reached on october 1836 to the falmouth town of england but in this 5 years he came across different countries different continents different islands and when he reached one group of islands called the galapagos islands which were about 500 miles from the south america he stayed there for 5 weeks and in his 5 weeks stay he was surprised to observe a living laboratory of evolution he discovered a lot of variations in different kinds of um, birds and tortoises but he was struck by the variations of one type of birds which are called the finch birds finch birds are very characteristic birds of south america but the finch birds which he observed on the mainland of south america <coughs> were very much different from the finch birds what he observed in the galapagos islands in what way were the different the finch birds of the galapagos islands were different in the um, beak shape and size there were a lot of variations in the beak shape and size some birds had a small beak some pointed beak some birds had a long pointed beak some had a curved beak uh, like that so he co- he was wondering what might be the reason for so many variations of the uh, beak shape and size of these birds exactly at the same time he was very much influenced uh, by one book which is called the principles of geology principles of geology this was a book published in three volumes from 1830 to 1833 the first volume of this book was given to him by the captain of the ship uh, what does the book state the book d- illustrates that the present world and the present earth what you're seeing today is because of many uniform changes which have occurred in the past many small changes which have occurred in the past that has given rise to the world or the earth what you're seeing today so he applied this same concept of geology even to biology he said that even the present life what we are seeing today the various plants and animals are also due to the same small changes very small small changes which occurred in the past and then he thought that even these finch birds what i'm seeing now is because of many small changes which have occurred in their beak shape and beak size because when these finch birds they when they migrated from the mainland of south america to uh, this galapagos islands which we call the geographical isolation they had to face a different kind of food different type of diet they were forced to feed on a different type of food so to adapt with that food they have undergone a variation in their beak shape and beak size some were feeding on hard nuts so they had to develop a sh- uh, small pointed beak and some were feeding on uh, fruits and vegetables so they had to develop a pointed beak some were drinking the nectar in the flower so they had to develop a long pointed beak so that they can dip into the flower and drink the nectar <coughs> so based on their different diet they have developed different favorable variations okay now uh in october 1836 uh, he returned to the falmouth town of england in after 2 years in 1838 he happened to uh, come across one research paper it was a very old research paper uh, the paper name is uh, uh, essay on population okay essay on the principles so sorry it is essay on the principles of population this was actually a very 
old research paper which was written a very long time ago by uh, Robert Malthus in 1778. Robert Malthus, he was an English scholar and a uh, political economist. Uh, he wrote this article, uh, Essay on the Principles of Population in 1778, but he read that paper in 1838. What does this paper explain? This paper explains the uh, high reproductive potential of human beings. He, the paper says that um, human population human population increases very rapidly increases rapidly it increases rapidly in a geometric progression in a geometric progression like uh, 1 2 4 and the double 8 the double 16 the double 32 like that Whereas the food available, the food sources or the plant population or the food sources, they will increase very slowly in uh, arithmetic progression. In arithmetic progression. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. Geometric pro progression in maths it means where it has a common multiple here it's a common multiple is two, but here it has a common difference. <coughs> Arithmetic progression means it's a common difference. Here the common difference is one. So the paper explains that human population it increases very rapidly in geometric progression, but the food sources uh, they increase very slowly in an arithmetic progression. These were the two statements which he read in this paper, but when he uh, read these two statements he got a doubt if this is the case if this is the case then that should result in a severe food scarcity food scarcity and also uh, there should be a very huge competition between the members of the population in spite of high food scarcity and intense copulation in that population intense competition in the population still uh, the human population remain fairly constant okay the population it remained constant how could that be possible that was the doubt uh, did you get it in spite because when the population is increasing and the food sources are increasing very slowly there should definitely be some food scarcity and also a competition for the food uh, between the members of this population and in that uh, situation slowly the population should decrease because the scarcity and the competition the population should decrease but in reality the population remained fairly constant what could be the re reason then um, he got the answer that uh, in this competition only certain members who have who have uh, favorable variations who can win the competition who can withstand the scarcity only they will survive and only they will live and only they will multiply and only they will reproduce and increase in number so this is the reason for natural selection so in that way uh, uh, the theory of natural selection it arised in his mind it germinated in his mind so in spite of food scarcity and competition how the population is still remaining constant then the answer what he got is uh, few members in that population develop few favorable variations with which they can uh, compete with the say scarcity or uh, adapt with that uh, changes uh, only they will survive and they will uh, reproduce and increase in number in that way it remains uh, constant next uh, so in that way from 1839 to 1858 uh, he started framing the theory in his mind framing the theory of natural selection in his mind still he didn't publish the theory still he didn't propose the theory he was still making the theory in his mind from 1839 to 1858 until 1858 uh, he received a letter which contained a scientific article written by uh, Alfred Russell Wallace written by Alfred Russell Wallace he sent a letter to Charles Darwin 
which contained a research article about the same idea of natural selection uh, which he has done a research on the Indonesian island. He was also a British uh, naturalist but he has done a research on the natural selection of Indonesian island and that research article he sent to Charles Darwin for a critical review just to go through it. Then Charles Darwin were very much surprised because it was the same theory which he was framing in his mind at that time. So both were coincidentally coming up with the same idea of natural selection. <coughs> so in the same year 1858 he called Alfred Russell Wallace. They both together discussed about this theory of natural selection and they both together uh, proposed this theory in the journal of Linnaean society in the same year uh, 1858. They both together published the theory of natural selection in this journal of Linnaean society. It was only in the next year 1859 he came up with his very famous book The Origin of Species. The Origin of Species. A very famous book. In that book he <coughs> specially uh, elaborated about the theory of natural selection and he documented all his observations which he came across in his five years journey about the finch birds everything he recorded but he made a special explanation special elaboration about the natural of uh, theory of natural selection in this book uh, origin of species okay and after 23 years uh, in 1882 he was dead Okay, in uh, 19th April, 19th April 1882, he was uh, dead and uh, the whole world honored him, respected him uh, and uh, Charles Darwin was buried in at the uh, Westminster Abbey uh, Church uh, in England, uh, just beside the graveyard of uh, uh, the great Newton because they honored him uh, with that respect. He was buried just be beside the grave of uh, the great Newton. Uh, recently I have uh, come across uh, uh, a news in the BBC where the Dean of the West Westminster Abbey uh, Church, uh, he announced that even the ashes of the great professor uh, Stephen Hawking, uh, even his ashes will be buried uh, in the same Westminster Abbey Church uh, um, along with this other famous scientists because uh, Stephen Hawking is also uh, a scientist who has created a lot of revolution in theoretical physics. Okay and that's it. Thank you.